Hello, welcome back. It's Pastor Rob. So good to have you back with us again on another uh, uh, on our playlist with another teaching on eschatology. Today I'm going to talk about, or in this particular study, we're going to talk about the Revelation 9 CERN theory. Revelation 9 CERN theory. And we call it a theory because it hasn't happened yet. It's just a theory. And so I'm going to teach you something today that could possibly happen in the future. It might happen, it might not, but at least to give you some perspective of, of what's going to take place in the future. So what we're going to do in this study is we're going to take a closer look at CERN, what it is, where it is, and how it just might tie into one, into one of the future Revelation 9 judgments that's going to take place during the tribulation. So the first thing you have to ask yourself is what is CERN? CERN, by the way, is spelled C-E-R-N. It's an acronym, and it stands, it stands for Council European Research Nuclear. And it's the European Organization for Nuclear Research. This is the place where physicists and engineers probe the fundamental structure of the universe. They use the world's largest and most complex scientific instruments to study the basic uh, constituents of matter, and uh, fundamental particles. So if you didn't understand what I just said, that's okay. All you need to do is to Google CERN or go onto YouTube and you can watch a bunch of videos about this place and what they do and uh, it'll give you a little bit more a little bit more information as to as to what's going on. Hopefully that'll help your uh, your understanding of, of what CERN is. Now <clears throat> These particles are made to collide together at close to the speed of light. The process gives the physicists clues about how the particles interact, and it provides them with insights into the fundamental laws of nature. The late Stephen Hawking, um, science mind, he was uh, in a wheelchair, but he was very brilliant. He uh, was aware of what they were doing at CERN, he told them they should not be doing what they're doing, that they're dabbling with forces that are outside of, of nature and so forth. And so he was not a fan of what was going on there. But CERN was founded in 1954, and the CERN laboratory sits astride the France-Swiss border near Geneva. So you have to know a little bit about geography to understand where it's at. If you go and you Google CERN, they'll have a map there that shows you where it's at. Now CERN's main function is to provide the particle accelerators and other infrastructure needed for high energy physics research. And as a result, numerous experiments, exper experiments have been constructed at CERN through international collaborations and for the purpose of the advancement of research and technology. Sounds like a bunch of hoopla, doesn't it? Well, I got this off their website. So the instruments used at CERN are called particle accelerators and detectors. These accelerators boost beams of particles to sublight speeds before the beams are made to collide with each other or with or, or stationary targets. Detectors observe and record the results of these collisions. Many activities at CERN currently involve operate, operating what is called the Large Hadron Collector, or LHC, and the, exp and, and the experiments for it. The Large Hadron Collector is the largest and most complex machine ever to be built by man. If you Google that, you will be able to see pictures of it. So just to, just to help you out with understanding what that is and what it's not. This uh, Large Hadron Collector, or LHC, is housed in the LHC tunnel which is located about 100 meters underground in the region between Geneva International Airport and the nearby, in the nearby Jerua Mountains. The majority of its length is on the French side of the border, but it uses a 27 kilometer circumference circular tunnel with a massive circular networks of pipes where the particles are accelerated through. So what these guys did is they went down deep into the earth and they dug a circle, a large circle, and then built in that circle the infrastructure for this collider. Now the main site in Geneva hosts a large computing facility, which is primarily used to store and analyze data from their experiments. Um, CERN, if you don't know, is also the birthplace of the World Wide Web. It has nothing to do with Al Gore, by the way. Now the town in France where CERN is located is called St. Genius Apollia. The name Paulia comes from the Latin apollocalium. The ancient Rome, 
In ancient Rome, a temple existed in this location and was built there in honor of Apollo. The people who lived there believed that the Temple of Apollo was a gateway to the underworld. The main headquarter building of CERN is strategically built atop this very location. Now, just outside of CERN's main office is the statue of the Hindu god of destruction, Shiva. You can Google that to uh, find out what that uh, god, their false god, looks like. It's actually this um, person with several arms doing this dance, and it's supposedly the 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 uh, the goddess of destruction. Now, in Revelation 9, the Apostle John foretells of a coming judgment that will unleash the hordes of hell upon certain people on the earth. This is in context with the fifth trumpet judgment occurring during the tribulation. The, the people these demonic hordes will attack are those who are not saved. That is, those who don't have the seal of God on their forehead. What I want to do here is I want to try to connect both of, the, both of these together. What John says and what's going on at CERN. So the Apostle John says in Revelation chapter 9, 1 through 6, Then the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven to the earth. To him was given the key to the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and smoke arose out of the pit like the smoke of a great furnace. So the sun and the air were darkened because of the smoke of the pit. Then out of the smoke locusts came upon the earth. And to them was given power, as of scorpions of the earth have power. They were commanded not to harm the grass of the earth, nor any green thing, or any tree, but only those men who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads. And any tree, and any, uh, and they were given, uh, and they were not given authority to kill them, but to torment them for five months. Their torment was like the torment of a scorpion when it strikes a man. In those days, men will seek death and will not find it. They will desire to die, and death will flee from them. So this judgment is in conjunction with the trumpet judgments occurring during the first half of the tribulation. This star could be an angel, or it could be a missile. We don't know. What we do know is that it has the power to open up the bottomless pit. This is the place in Hades known as the Abyss. It's the great gulf fix that separates Abraham's bosom, which we believe to be empty, from Gehenna, the place of hell, fire, and damnation. You can read about that in this in Luke chapter 16. Now, the opening of the bottomless pit infers that a rift, was, a rift was open in hell and a great dark superheated smoke was released into the air, which caused the area to be darkened. The smoke will be so thick that it will block out the light of the sun uh, in that particular area. From the dense smoke, these creatures, these locusts, will be released. This explosion has the appearance of a super volcano erupting and spewing, spewing hot ash like the smoke of a great furnace into the air. From the smoke come these locusts. Now the word locust in the Greek there is akris, and it's used here and in context with this passage. Vines says it this way, and I quote, They appear as monsters representing satanic agencies, let loose by divine judgments inflicted upon men for five months the time of the natural life of the locust. Now, these are not regular locusts that can be killed or eaten by men, or locusts that would go after, you know, green plants and trees and, and grass. They're supernatural creatures that come from hell, and they're sent by God to torment the unsaved men on the earth for five months. That's the lifespan of a typical locust species. These creatures target the unsaved, those who don't have the mark of God on their forehead. They don't go after the normal locust, what, what, what normal locusts would pursue, grass, green things, trees. These creatures are going after unsaved men, and their purpose is to torment them for five months. This tells you that these creatures are from hell, and their purpose uh, in hell is to torment men there eternally. Now, while on earth there is a time limit because these creatures are part of God's entire judgment plan. These creatures won't be able to kill men. They can only torment men. Their uh, sting is like that of a scorpion, but worse because these locusts are from hell. Now men are going to want to die. They'll even seek to die. That phrase, seek to die, refers to suicide, but they won't be able to die just like you can't die in hell. And they will, they will call out to God for salvation, but it won't help them during this season of torment just like in hell. This will be the form of this judgment. John goes on to say in Revelation 9, verses 7 and following, The shape of the locusts was like horses prepared for battle. On their heads were crowns of something like gold, and their faces were like the faces of men. 
They had hair like women's hair, and their teeth were like lion's teeth. And they had breastplates like breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was like the sound of chariots with many horses running into battle. They had tails like scorpions, and there were stings in their tails, and the power was to hurt men for five months. And they had a king over them, uh, the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in Hebrew is Abaddon, which means destruction, but in the Greek his name is Apollyon, which means destroyer. One woe is past, behold, still two mo more woes are coming after these things. So here we, here we can see the impact that these creatures are having on their unsaved victims. They're tormentors. This is their purpose, both in hell and now on earth for five months. This passage further illustrates who their king was, the angel of the bottomless pit. The Hebrew name is Abaddon, which means destruction, but the Greek name is Apollyon, which means destroyer. We see the agenda of these locusts connected with the agenda of the devil and of hell, total destruction. So the question, what does this have to do with CERN? So this, is, this, this particular study is the CERN Revelation 9 theory. Here's the theory. That one day in the not too distant future, of course during the tribulation, and specifically the fifth trumpet judgment, an explosion will occur in the LHC that will open a part of the earth's crust and release the horde of these demonic creatures who will torment men for five months, just like it's described in Revelation chapter 9. The reason for sharing this information about CERN in conjunction to the teaching of Revelation 9 has more to do with a plausible reason for the Lord to allow such demonic creatures to escape from hell and into our world to torment certain men, certain unsaved men. This is God's way of pleading with humanity during the tribulation by giving them a taste of hell with all its eternal horrors and lack of death. You see, God is a God of love, but he's also a just God and cannot allow sin to go unpunished. The penalty of sin is death, and since we are created in the image and likeness of God, we will exist forever in one of two places, heaven or hell. Now this judgment is as harsh as, as it is personal, but it's not for any trib saint who has accepted Jesus into their heart. The reason for this has more to do with the principle of spiritual protection that is afforded us when we receive Jesus into our life as Lord and Savior and when our names are written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. In Luke 10, 19 and 20, Jesus says it this way, Behold, I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Any saved person has this spiritual protection over their lives, over demons. While it's true that demons can harass and they can bother and they can even buffet Christians, it's equally true that they can't hurt you physically or kill you. Paul the Apostle talked about how he had pleaded with God three times because a messenger of Satan was buffeting him. And God says, my, my grace is sufficient for you. So we can see where these creatures can harass us, but they can't empower us. They can't possess us, and they certainly can't do physical harm to us because we are covered by the blood of Jesus. Our, our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. So if you study CERN more, you'll discover that they have a dark agenda when it comes to their science. And many people who work there have reported supernatural events pertaining to demonic activity. The logo of CERN is a makeup of the number 666, and if you Google it, you can see what I'm talking about. So it's a theory. I want to give credit to Pastor Thomas Horn, who's written a couple of books on this topic, and he describes this in a little more detail. And so um, if you want more information, all you have to do is uh, Google Thomas Horn, and he has a series of books there, and this is one of them that he covers. I just wanted to give this to you on the off chance that Maybe you uh, wanted to see the possibility that these two could be connected. Uh, the bottom line is, is that tribulation is going to be tough, real tough. Like the worst thing that anybody can go through. And thank God we believe that we won't be here for it. Thank God we believe that the Christ um, is coming for his church before the tribulation. So we believe that. And so we want to be ready for the Lord's return. But we also want to leave for people that are left behind information that might help them to know what to do and not do. In this case, if, it's, if you're watching this during the tribulation, you need to accept Christ. You need to have the Christ come into your life. And when he comes into your life, you're going to have the seal of God on you. And no creature from hell or any other place is going to be able to hurt you because you're covered by the blood of Jesus. You can accept the Christ 
and you can be ready for his return. But if you die during the tribulation, you'll be ushered into the presence of God, under the altar of the Lord in the kingdom of heaven, where there you will wait until the end of the tribulation when Christ returns to the earth, and then you'll return with him in a glorified body. So it's not too late. We encourage you. All right, well, this is our study. It was a brief one, but just something that will help you to, to know what we're talking about when it comes to CERN. And you'll have to go and Google and do your little uh, ch checks to find out more about that place. Uh, but for now, we just wanted to give that to you. So this is Pastor Rob Lee saying God bless you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Again, if you have questions or comments, it's info at gvag.net. All right, thank you. God bless you. Bye.